We learned in 1957 from a turkey study uh, where they took 250,000 turkeys and they put them on a complete turkey pellet trying to get them to finish for market within a few days or a week or so of each other. And in the first 13 weeks, fully half of them, 125,000 of them died. Farmers were out there every morning. They picked them up every morning by the bushel basketful, took them to the state diagnostic lab to see what they died from. When they opened them up, every one of them had died of a ruptured aortic aneurysm. And one of the clever pathologists says that's got to be due to a copper deficiency because copper is required to manufacture the elastic fibers of arteries and skin and other tissues. And the mechanism of an aneurysm is identical to the mechanism of a balloon on a weakened wall of a tire. You know when you hit a chuck hole with your tire and you break the cords, the internal pressure blows a balloon, you overload that tire with weight or heat it up on a highway, it blows out. Same way with an aneurysm. When you have a copper deficiency, you get a breakdown of the elastic fibers uh, in that artery, the internal pressure, even normal blood pressure will blow a balloon in that artery. And a balloon in an artery is called an aneurysm. And of course, if it's in a strategic place like the brain, the carotid artery, the coronary arteries, the large arteries, the aorta, pulmonary artery, renal arteries, they blow out, you die suddenly, uh, just like you've been shot. Well, uh, they got excited about this. They doubled the amount of uh, copper in these um, pellets. The next year, they tried to raise 500,000 turkeys, and they did not lose a single one from a ruptured aneurysm. They went from a 50% loss to a 0% loss just by adding a little bit of copper to those pellets. So they said, well, maybe the same thing is true for humans. And in 19... Uh, 58, they started looking at uh, copper deficiency in various species of animals and humans, and here's what they found out. The very first symptom of copper deficiency is white, gray, and silver hair. Copper is required as a cofactor to manufacture hair pigment. doesn't matter if it's blonde, red, brown, or black hair. And I see a lot of copper deficiency in this room. I can almost tell you which people, men and women who have colored their hair, get pretty good at that, at being a physician. And you don't want to be like a medical doctor and just treat the symptoms. If you're just coloring your hair, you're treating the symptoms. You need to do the basic thing of take some colloidal copper. And if you don't, uh, what's going to happen is uh, you get a breakdown of the elastic fibers in your skin and you start getting crow's feet around the corners of your eyes and your mouth. Parts of your anatomy begin to sag. And you know you're in trouble when your doctor tells you, look, I've got a golf buddy down the hall who's a plastic surgeon for $10,000. He'll make you look 20 years younger. But you don't need a face lift, a booby lift, a tummy tuck, or a derriere lift. All you need is some copper and everything will come back up just like you have a hydraulic jack under it. It'll just come right back up. Those elastic fibers tighten right up. People say, Francine, did you get a facelift? You look great. You look like you're 20 years younger. Now, if you don't take some action at that point, the next thing that happens is you get a breakdown of the elastic fibers in the large veins of your legs, and you get varicose veins. If you don't take action at that point, you get a breakdown of the elastic fibers in the large veins of your exhaust pipe, and you get hemorrhoids. So if you have hemorrhoids, varicose veins, things that sag, wrinkles, white, gray, or silver hair, the odds are you have aneurysms developing in you somewhere. And you don't want to, of course, die suddenly of a ruptured aneurysm when your body's been warning you for 10, 20, 30 years. Just remember, people don't die suddenly of an aneurysm. It may be you drop and die. Think about old Albert Einstein. He died of a ruptured aortic aneurysm at 68 years of age. What color was his hair? He was famous for wild white hair, wasn't he? Now, you'd like to think that people who win the Nobel Prize in medicine would at least live to be 75.5, but they live to be 58 just like other doctors. And, of course, that's because they are trained and they believe and they practice. You can get everything you need from your four food groups. doesn't matter if they win the Nobel Prize or not. This guy here, Dr. George Kohler, was the youngest person ever to win the Nobel Prize in medicine in history. 37 years old, wins the Nobel Prize in medicine. And he won the Nobel Prize in medicine for studying monoclonal antibodies, which are antibodies trained to attack cancer cells. And if they ever get this really working, it'll be great because they won't have to use chemotherapy anymore, which kills more people than it saves. 11 years after winning the Nobel Prize in medicine, Dr. George Kohler, now 48, drops dead of a cardiomyopathy heart attack because he believed you can get everything you need from your four food groups. Didn't take any selenium, died of a cardiomyopathy heart attack.